Hi there, Pastor Dave here. This is a presentation called Extravagant Welcome of the United Church of Christ. And I am going to walk you through this uh, for the purpose of you understanding some more about the denomination in which you find yourself. The faith of the United Church of Christ, which we call the UCC for short, is over, um, oh, let's see, 2,000 years old, I think. Well, it's that's the the idea is that the church itself is 2,000 years old and we are part of the church. So the UCC is over 2,000 years old, but our thinking isn't. We are a denomination with many firsts to our credit, including we were the first denomination to ordain an African-American pastor. Lemuel Haynes uh, was the first African-American ordained by any Protestant denomination. Only ever served white churches, in fact. In 1853, we ordained the first woman as a pastor, Antoinette Brown, who became Antoinette Brown Blackwell when she married um, someone named Blackwell. And he was a minister also. And uh, she served for about a year at a church in New York and left the Congregational Church there in New York in order to join her husband in the Unitarian Church. We were also the first to ordain an openly gay pastor. And um, here you see Bill Johnson uh, at his ordination. And uh, he was a member of the Golden Gate Association. There's actually a film about him that you can watch on YouTube. Uh, if you would like to see that sometime, I'll share it with you. But um, he eventually became uh, a leader in the church for uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender rights and uh, led, for, uh, led what became the Open and Affirming Coalition. This inclusive vision is expressed in the original logo of the United Church of Christ, which you see right there in front of the dove. Um, and uh, it expresses the uh, hope for all believers in Christ to be together someday. Um, you see the crown over the cross and the cross standing within the orb of the earth. We call that the crown, cross, and orb insignia. And if you look below, there is the statement that they may all be one or that they all may, yeah, that they may all be one. Uh, and that is taken from the prayer of Jesus in the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verse 21. The modern slogan of the United Church of Christ is, God is still speaking, comma. And, you know, if you take a look at this particular image, uh, you can see that there is a bit of a comma there. And also, we uh, celebrate lots. You'll see there's lots of different colors of people in this insignia also. So, what's the big deal about the comma? And what does it have to do with the UCC? Um, there was a woman back in the 1950s whose name was Gracie Allen. She and her husband, George, had their own television show. And Gracie Allen died a little early. And uh, But she used to leave love notes for George all around the house. And one of the things that George talked about was going through his underwear drawer one day. He, he came upon his last pair of underwear. He hadn't done the laundry in a long time. And uh, as he pulled the last pair of briefs out of the drawer, he found a note from Gracie that said, never place a period where God has placed a comma. And really what she wanted for George to know was that his life wasn't over, that even though she was gone, it still meant that um, they might still, he might still have a meaningful life. And now you see the lines, woman without her man is nothing, woman without her man is nothing, um, or without her, man is nothing. And uh, so you can see how, 
moving that comma around might change the meaning of something. And uh, so let's, let's take another look at commas here. Uh, you can see how the one sentence says things seem hopeless and there's a period at the end of it. But if you put a comma at the end of it, it means that the story's not over. So that's really where Gracie was going with George. This open-ended statement, God is still speaking, is the starting point for United Church of Christ theology. It prompts us to ask, who is God and what is God saying to you today? John H. Thomas was the general minister and president of the United Church of Christ from 1999 to 2009. And this is how he describes the idea of extravagant welcome in the sermon he gave in the UCC's 50th anniversary. He said, we are an open and affirming church in which the abundant gifts of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender persons are honored and received both in the church and in the larger society. A multiracial, multicultural church in which the continued reality of racism is confronted and the diverse spiritualities of God's people are honored and shared. A church accessible to all where the architecture of our buildings and our liturgies, and perhaps most importantly of our beliefs and attitudes, reflects the architecture of the holy city where doorways are extravagantly wide and eternally open, no ejector seats or bouncers, and a peace with justice church, a church responsive to the demands of justice in a world easily intimidated, a church committed to peace in a world intoxicated with violence, extravagant welcome, evangelical courage. The challenge according to uh, Dr. Thomas is moving beyond catchy phrases and bumper sticker beliefs and putting our lofty ideals into practice. Here is an actual commercial that aired on national television that expresses the extravagant welcome of the United Church of Christ. The United Church of Christ. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. It's, it was from a 2002 ad campaign uh, by the United Church of Christ, which actually got banned on some network television because it was as scandalous as it was. Freak people out a little bit, you can imagine. So let's take a crash course on the history of the United Church of Christ. This is a simple diagram that uh, shows the history of the development of the United Church of Christ. You got it? Don't worry, there won't be a test. I just want you to get a general sense of where the UCC comes from. But you can see the UCC all the way to the right. You can see the early church all the way to the left. Our Christian faith is founded and based on the life and teachings of Jesus. That's our starting point. Jesus' life is recorded in accounts written by his followers or people who learned of his teachings. And these are called Gospels. Four of them are included in the Bible we, we read today. Now we're going to skip about 1,500 years of history to an event that sparked what is known as the Protestant Reformation. In 1517, a Roman Catholic monk named Martin Luther nailed his 95 theses to the door of the church in Wittenberg, Germany. And his dissent triggered the founding of Protestant denominations such as the Lutherans, the Presbyterians, and the Anglican Church, which was the official state church of England and plays a big part in our history. One group of our forebears came to what they called the New World in the 1600s to find freedom from the then leaders of the Anglican Church. They were known as pilgrims, uh, and eventually the Puritans came, and, and when the Puritans and the, and the pilgrims got together, um, the separatists 
got together. They all formed a, a, a new church called Congregational. Um, this makes up one part of our heritage. Skipping lightly over 200 years or so, in the 1800s, a collection of churches eventually came together to form the Christian Church. The Christian Church and the Congregational Church merged together in 1931 during the Great Depression. Another group that makes up the UCC today comes from the Reformed Church tradition. That's the churches that were uh, growing out of the Calvinist movement, but in the German states in Central Europe. They didn't call themselves Presbyterians, they called themselves Reform. A group of people came from Germany in the 1700s of this tradition. A third group that is part of our heritage comes from yet a different German church tradition, the Evangelical Synod of North America. Our evangelical church predecessors came from Germany to the Midwest in the 1800s, and the Evangelical Synod of North America was founded in Missouri in 1840. Eden Seminary started out as an evangelical seminary. The motto of the Evangelical Synod in North America was, in essentials, unity, in non-essentials, liberty, in all things, love. The UCC, as we know it today, was founded in 1957 in the United States of America as a merger of these four previously existing Protestant denominations, the Congregational, the Christian, the Evangelical, and the Reformed. So, now we know how the United Church of Christ came to be a church, but how does it actually work? Who's in charge? And how do we make decisions? The United Church of Christ is not a hierarchical organization with some big boss that makes all the decisions that everyone else carries out. Instead, leadership is shared with lots of people playing a part in what are called covenanted ministries, with people working together for the good of the whole church and the world. There are four covenanted ministries of the United Church of Christ. The first is local church ministries, which works with local individual congregations like ours. Groups of congregations in a region, which are also called associations, and groups of associations that work together as a conference. In total, there are 38 conferences, 184 associations, and over 5,100 UCC churches throughout the country. The next of the covenanted ministries is Justice and Witness Ministries, which is about serving all those in need for whatever reason, be it poverty or discrimination or something else. The third covenanted ministry is the Office of General Ministries, which looks at the total mission of the church and is led, as you might expect, by the General Minister of the United Church of Christ, John Dorhauer. Reverend John Dorhauer is our general minister. He was elected in 2015. John Dorhauer is originally from the St. Louis area uh, and has served churches here and then in wider capacities as a conference minister, both in Missouri and in Arizona, before becoming the general minister and president. The final covenanted ministry is Wider Church Ministries, which supports the United Church of Christ ministries throughout the nation and around the world in healthcare, education, disaster relief, social services, interfaith dialogue, global education, and advocacy. Finally, there is one place where all of these covenanted ministries get together once every two years, which is called General Synod. General Synod is a gathering of delegates representing the conferences of the United Church of Christ. These delegates meet and worship and discuss matters of importance to our church and the world to offer direction to local churches for engaging in vital and needed ministries. Thanks for taking the time with me today uh, for this special presentation on uh, the United Church of Christ. If you'd like more information about any of these things, please don't hesitate to ask. Thanks for joining me.